This is Matt Bow with Matthew Bow Design Build, and today I am on our project in Leesburg, Virginia. We've titled this our Net Zero House, and by that I mean that with the design specifications that we've incorporated, which include some extremely energy efficient specifications, uh, along with a 10 kW solar array, this house will generate all of its own power. And in fact, uh, our calculations tell us that they will have surplus power that will be going back onto the grid uh, month to month. So today I wanted to point out a few of the features that we've incorporated that are um, really reducing the energy demand for this home. The first one, very obvious one, is that green sheathing you see on the house. So typically at this stage um, in construction, you'd see a white building paper on the house it might have the name Tyvek or something like that uh, written on it. Um, this particular sheathing uh, is a very unique product. It's manufactured by a company named Huber and it's their zip system. And what is unique about it is that instead of that white building paper that you typically see, which is known as a water resistant barrier or a WRB, um, with this product, the WRB is in integral with the fabrication of the panel. So the last layer of this panel when it's fabricated is a phenolic impregnated craft paper and becomes a part of the panel itself. And then uh, there is a proprietary uh, tape that you can see on the building, the black tape. We tape all of the seams and the combination of those two create a very, very good air barrier. So the house is, uh, is very tight and that contributes greatly to the reduction in energy demand. So we're going to take a walk over there and take a closer look at this sheathing because there's another very interesting uh, aspect about it that I want to show to you. And I was, and I was mentioning the um, sheathing product that we're using on this house. And so you see it here up close. It is Huber's Zip System. Um, and again, the water resistant barrier known as the WRB, you can see is part of the panel fabrication, but the other really unique piece of this is what you see here, this layer of rigid foam, uh, which uh, actually provides a thermal break around the entire part of the house. And what I'm speaking of is that, of course, everybody knows that insulation typically goes in between studs, but studs, studs, are a uh, thermal bridge, meaning they, they conduct heat uh, to and from the outside of the house. Um, they do not insulate as good as the insulation. By adding this sheathing, we're creating a thermal break around the entire perimeter of the house. So it does two things. Between that and the tape detail, we've made the house really tight. And also we provided the thermal break to account for thermal bridging of, of studs, and we, uh, we achieve a much better performance rating on the house as a result. So some of the other things we've done to significantly improve the performance of the um, thermal envelope on this house is that we've upsized our framing to two by six and expanded the spacing to 24 inches on center. Some cost cross. I'm um, talking about the distance between the studs here, and so by doing that, we've got more insulation and less framing lumber in the building envelope. And again, uh, framing lumber is a thermal bridge and reduces the performance of your building. So by reducing the number of studs and increasing the amount of insulation, we improve the performance. And then by adding the thermal break on the outside with the insulated sheathing, we've increased it again. And then finally, another area of interest is this outside corner that you see. So typically, these corners are full of a lot of framing lumber, the way they're typically framed. It's very hard to get insulation packed back in there, and so your corners tend to be a weak spot with regards to the performance uh, of your um, exterior insulation envelope. So what we've done here is we've eliminated some of the typically used uh, framing detail. We've simply added this three quarter inch piece of plywood. The only reason we need it is to catch the drywall here, give it something to attach drywall to. But we will be able to get insulation all the way deep into the outside corner 
of that wall and, and that's at every outside corner and it's another way that we've increased uh, the performance of the house and reduced the energy demand. So that's our visit for today. I just wanted to point out some of the um, design specifications that we are incorporating into this house to really reduce the energy demand and um, bring it to that point where it is our net zero home. In future episodes, I will be highlighting installation of the geothermal system, including the wells that we'll be drilling, and also the installation of the 10KW solar array that will be providing all of the um, energy needs uh, for this house. Uh, but for now, I just wanted to bring you again around to the back side of the house. So we're looking at the back of the house, and I'm doing that on purpose. In our market here, the tendency uh, is to make a nice front elevation, put all of the design and interest in the front facade, and then when you walk around the sides or the back of the house, it's really plain, it's really boring, it's very uninspired, and it's always done simply to save money. Um, I think that's a really poor choice. Uh, I'm always disappointed when I see that. For our homes, we always want to make sure that the elevations are interesting from all four sides. And so we like to see, as you, as you like to do, as you can see here, like to change planes, have interesting roof lines, um, have bump-ins um, and recesses, all in an effort to create interest and make a home architecturally appealing from any view. So this is Matt Bow with Matthew Bow Design Build. Stay tuned for our upcoming uh, visits to this site where we will be looking at some of the other really interesting and effective uh, techniques we're using to create this net zero home. We'll see you soon. Bye.